A lot of work, a lot of work, but we're almost there. Guys, welcome to Predatory Fins. Today, we're not gonna be setting up new systems. As you can see, we actually have this whole row set up. We still gotta do the plumbing, which is for me is the most pain in the butt part. We still gotta put the tanks on this side. And we also already move these tanks. Now, they're only able to see it out of one side. These, I think, are eight by 24 or maybe 26 they're gonna be great because we need more tank we need more water volume to get more fish in so if we get like 100 of the same fish we can put it in one of these tanks but in the future we would like to build the same exact thing on this side so you can walk around and have tanks on both sides but again today is not gonna be plumbing as you oh look all the plumbing for these systems are already ready to go I honestly don't like plumbing myself but I'll do it if I have to and he's been doing it for a lot longer, so, you know, he's, he's better than me. Just let him do it. But we got to have some fun. Today was a pain in the butt day. It's raining. It's getting cold, as you can see. And we had to insulate all the windows. We haven't done all of them, but we had to insulate all those windows because the cold is coming. And you guys know already I love the cold, and that's why I left Florida, because I, I want to freeze my ass. I'm not here to plumb fish. I'm not here to do unboxing. I'm not here to clean anymore. I'm tired. I just want to be done. But I do want to enjoy this as a hobbyist. So what we're going to do today, I set up a little tank there, just cheap, easy, just what we had around. Set up a little tank. We're going to get some fish, put in that tank. But before we do that, I want to set it up. I want to put some driftwood, some plants, and I want to go to my favorite fish store. So if you guys want to see what fish we add into that tank, stay to the end. Let's get it done. Do uh, you have something to say, woman? Um, let's go. I thought about, I really want to start growing some fish, right? And I put this little tank together here for you. I'm going to show you guys how to immediately be able to put fish in, the cyst in this tank without having to go through an ammonia spike or anything that can happen for you to lose them. And it's very simple. A lot of you guys ask me, oh, why have all those media... Uh, bags floating, the, uh, the bags of media. So this is a lot of bacteria living in here, right? It's already cycle media. So when you put anything from a system that's already up and running, not the water, okay? A lot of times people say, oh, I use the water for my thing. No, no, no. You have to use either driftwood, a sponge, or, or any substrate, right? For an old tank that's already up and running, cycle, take it and put it in here. Now, my idea today was I have the sponge here that's been, I left it in a tank for about two weeks with a lot of fish and the media. And then I had this little skimmer. This is for a saltwater tank. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the media inside of here. The water is gonna go through all this media and eventually all the bacteria will start growing towards this way. It's just a makeshift little thing that I did today just to get this tank up and running quick. I don't have any filtration, but my goal is to eventually get a couple more tanks around this room and maybe we can do the podcast here when we have all this set up. But I do want to grow some fish and the fish that I want to grow here today, I have to pick a fish that can also take colder water because this driftwood is taken out. So we're not going to be able to put a lid. Eventually they're going to be able to handle just cold water and be okay with it. But I like the way it looks. Look from the front. It looks okay right now. So we're going to add some, this is what I got. Let me turn the light on. We're going to add some plants that we went and we got it already. I don't know what this plant is called. Do you know what this plant is called, babe? Oh, here you go. Plant. Asian water fern. Yeah, it's live plant. Uh, B. Hetero, het, heteroclita? Heteroclita. Is that how you say that? Yeah, right? Heteroclita? Looks like it. Okay, well, it's a clita, so it's a girl. Um, here, I think we have a bamboo and two long grasses. I know nothing That's about plants. Term. I know nothing about plants. I like this one a lot. I like this one because it's a bamboo tree with moss cover. Well, moss cover bamboo branch. So I, I want to see what it looks like. Apparently, you have to leave it in the light, and hopefully, they will grow. And then I also got the substrate. It's an eco planet acquiring substrate. Hopefully, it works, but it should be good for plants, or I just lost $20. 
Like I said, I don't know nothing about plant, neither does Sugar or Lisa or Ryan. All right, so that's all we're gonna add to this tank. I want to add this stuff right now, and then we're gonna go to our favorite fish store to pick up our fish. Oh, all the crap came from the other side. Oh, nice. Definitely gonna need a water change after this. big enough that it's not going to go out through the hole. All this media here, it's already cycled, right? So basically what this, this is doing is pulling the water from here, shooting it down. All the water is going to pass through it and come out from this pipe. And that will help cycle this tank a lot faster and not have any problems with an ammonia spike, but this is not the proper setup because this is a saltwater skimmer. I just don't really have any filtration right now. So, but it works. He's doing what I want. I can actually add another bag of media right there, but the media doesn't have to move. It's just the water's going through all the bacteria and coming out on the other side. So eventually I say about a week, all the bacteria will be spread it and in two weeks, the tank should be cycled but already it has live bacteria here and live bacteria there. But I'll add another bag. Let me get this water change done because the tank looks like crap now. Actually, it looks cool, look. With the light off, it almost looks like a, a horror movie tank. <laughs> That's your new tank, bro. You like it? He's gonna help you stop whining? Maybe not. What do you think? Guys, it's late night, so Lisa's gonna have to take Ryan home. Are you gonna keep acting up or? That's a yes. I was gonna say, let's go to our favorite fish store and go over there, open the door and come back in, but there's no time to waste because this child does not stop crying. <laughs> Can we just get the fish real quick and leave him acclimating? Babe, talking yeah. to you? All right, so come over here real quick. Fine, just, just two minutes, bro, two minutes, okay? Just two minutes. Daddy has to come back to work. All right. Since that tank is gonna be like a colder water because we're not gonna plug a heater, let me show you the fish that I want. So I wanna add one of these tiger muskies. They're on the bottom, like the thin ones on the bottom. I want to add one of the barramundis. Look how they all look at us. Right, right now, this tank is cold. It has no heater. Okay, and then right here, I'm just going to take all these guys. <laughs> these are the giant trevelis. I've been waiting for them for a while. I had them on the website. We sold a lot of them, but I want to keep this group. Hey, man, stop, stop crying. It's for your own fish. And I also want to add one of these drums. I know they can take colder water as well. Right, so that should be enough for that tank. It's only a 75 gallons. The, the reason why we can't, the reason why we can't add too much is because of, um, we're running out of power. So like, there's this big tank to set up, but we don't have enough power because we still have to set up a couple of tanks for race to, uh, so we can get all of our race back. And uh, the 75 is okay. That's why I don't even want to plug in a heater because we're going to have to use heaters on all this tank when the winter comes. So let's get our fish, leave an acclimate. Let's get our fish, leave him acclimating, and then I'll see you guys in a bit. Yeah? <laughs> Say bye bye. Huh? Oh, come on, bye bye. Say bye bye. Say bye bye. Oh, I just saw the spit fly. And put him down. All our giant trevelis, look how cool they look. Let me put some oxygen in there. This water is super cold, but that water is warmer. Hey man, don't make a mess, okay? Because you're already a mess. this okay now basically what we're gonna do is just put some ah ryan used to hate this when he was a little remember when he was a baby hey don't eat that let's 
Excuse me. Look how cool they look. Look, look, look. So we got the whole school in there. We're gonna let them acclimate. And then we're gonna go ahead and uh, release them when we come back. All right, what do you think? Ooh, you like it? He cares about opening doors. No, don't bang it. Ah, uh, okay, all right. Now it's time to let these guys start swimming around. Before I add anybody else, I wanna see how they do on the tank by themselves because it's not a huge tank, it's only a 75 gallons, but it's better than where they were staying before. So I think it's uh, plenty of space for them for now. And they should do well. These guys are right now in full fresh water. Maybe I'll add a little bit of uh, salt in here as well, because I like to add salt in all the tanks, even our fresh water tanks. And make sure the temperature should be the same. Yep, yeah, it's the same. All right. Let's see how they do. This is exciting though, because I really always wanted one of these guys. And now I have a whole school of them. Oh yeah, that looks awesome. What I like about giant trevally too is they're always swimming and they're schooling fish and they're always swimming around. They never stop moving. I like that, that looks really cool. And they're healthy too, so hopefully let them acclimate for a little bit and uh, they will start eating. Let's see from the side. Oh yeah, they look like they're happy. And you know, for those of you who don't know, giant trevally are saltwater fish. They can also live in freshwater when they're young and they should grow pretty big. Not as big as an arapaima, but they can also get decent size so right now we're just gonna keep them in here until uh, they get bigger and we move them to a bigger tank but yeah maybe i'll just add two more fish in here because that's that's a lot not because of the media because the media will be able to handle plus we're doing water changes but i want these guys to have all the space they can have there's a problem already i switched my mind because i want to add some other fish in here and that's the problem when you have a variety that you can get anything you want just a couple of steps away. So I wanted to add some color into this tank, right? Cause all the fish are silver and I decided to add this guy. I always like them every time they come in. These are called the golden puffers or avocado puffers. You'll be able to see when he's out the bag. Super cool. But I think that they need a little warmer water. So eventually um, we're gonna have to put a heater in this tank. Right now, it's not cold at all, so he's gonna be okay. But I decided to get him, add him in there, since we only had a few left. And by the way, guys, all these fish that I'm adding to this tank is on the website as well, um, besides the giant trevelis. Maybe I'll still leave some up, but I definitely wanna keep a group of six and uh, grow up a group of six. And instead of the tiger muskie and the barramundi, I got the croaker. In there, I got one of the smaller ones so he can clean the bottom. And I got a Chinese perch because the Chinese perch is pretty much around the same size as the giant trevelis, as of the barramundi was a little bit bigger already. It's about six, seven inches. So we're gonna go ahead and let these guys acclimate. Puffer is ready to go. But let's see. I like the, oh, these guys are ready to eat already. Can't wait. Let's see if they will eat after. Well, buddy, welcome to your new home. Oh, he looks so cool. So these dudes, I don't think they grow past five inches, to be honest with you. A four and a half inches already an adult. So I think these little guys won't get big. So the 75 will be great for him. And the Chinese perch is like ready to get out. Come on, buddy. Broker. The Chinese perch is pretty dark. Uh, once he acclimates to the tank, he should lighten up a lot and look a lot better. But they almost do look like a bear mundi. Same body type, same body shape. And croakers right here. Now these guys, they're eating shrimp, but you actually have to feed them a lot because otherwise they will always start looking a little thinner. 
So you do have to feed them a lot. Look, the red is starting to come out. Beautiful fish. And they grow too. They grow, I think the biggest one I've seen is probably like 24, 30 inches. So right now we have the golden puffer, the Chinese perch, the croaker, and the giant trevally. I think this tank is pretty much done. We're going to go ahead and see if we can feed them. I'm going to start defrosting some shrimp. And uh, let's see how they do. But so far, everybody looks pretty good. Okay, so it's about 20 minutes since these guys are in. Let's go ahead, put some shrimp in there and see if they'll eat it. Oh yeah, right away. So we can't put too much because it's a new tank and they don't, they don't want the ammonia to spike. But these guys are just devouring. I think it's gonna be hard for everybody else to get food. I might have to just put it all at once. I don't wanna do it too much. They're literally taken right out of my hand. Yep, they love shrimp, all right. Well, at least they're spitting it out so the other fish can get some to the Chinese perch looking at it. Now, with perches, you got to be very careful because if you have rocks in your tank and the food goes on the ground, he's going to suck it. And next thing you know, he swallowed the gravel and the gravel will be stuck inside of him and he'll die. I had that happen to me uh, with a detonoid. So you just got to be very careful. Try to always feed him on top. But those guys ate. The puffer hasn't eaten anything yet. Let's just see. Let's just see how they do. Let me know in the comments below if you guys like this tank. Let me back up a little bit so you can see it better. And what we think we should do different. I might take this stuff right here out and just leave the big, two big driftwoods and the plants. Maybe add some more plants in the future. I just want a lot of space for them to swim around on top um, because they will probably outgrow this tank pretty quick. So let me know what you guys think and um, what fish we should add next. Not to this tank, but we have another tank down here. I'm picking up more tanks. I want to set up this whole room with different tanks so I can promote these fish and show it to you guys better because in the tanks back there where we have the wholesale system, it's really hard to see them. And um, a lot of these fish are very pretty, beautiful animals. And it's just hard to see unless you have something set up so they can acclimate to the tank and start feeling more at home. These fish are looking amazing in here. I almost forgot what it's like to have a tank set up like this. Even though it's small, I like the look of it, you know, because like I said, our tanks over there are playing because of a situation right now where it's easier to clean. But since we have these fish here right now, let's learn a little bit more about them. The giant trevally, for example, right? If you just Google real quick, it says the giant trevally, also known as the lowly trevally, barrier trevally, giant kingfish. So these are also called giant kingfish, which is pretty cool. I like that name. Uh, it's a large marine fish classified in the jack family. So we also have the, mang the, the red mangrove jack, but I don't want to put one here because I think he will eventually kill all these guys. These guys don't really tear fish apart or prey. They just swallow whole, almost like an arapaima, but reading more about them, these can get up to six feet in the wild. Now in a tank, they'll never get that size. Even in the huge tank we want to build in the future, these guys might not get to that size. It would probably take years and years for them to even reach a six feet. In the ocean, with the open ocean, yes, they will get to that set level. But these, I believe, were farm raised for food in Asia. So it's pretty cool. We're giving them a second chance, six feet. And 160 pounds this is the world record that's like a human being which is pretty cool so they do get massive for me they have like the same body shape of a tuna pretty much so they're built for speed and um i've seen videos where these guys are coming out of the water and you know when a when a bird is swimming by they just grab the bird 
right on top of the water, which is insane to think about. Do giant trevallies have teeth? Uh, let's see. The upper jaw contains a series of strong outer canines with an inner band of smaller teeth. So they do have teeth, but like I said, I don't think that they really go trying to chop fish apart. They mainly swallow them whole. As far as I can see, even with the shrimp that we feed them here. Oh, this is a pretty cool one. How fast can the giant trevally swim? An aggressive, large and powerful fish. These attributes make giant trevally an ideal game fish, averaging over 40 inches in length, nearly 30 pounds, well, I guess is a little guys, and can swim up to 37 miles per hour. Can giant trevally live in fresh water? Giant trevally is primarily a saltwater fish. However, the young ones growing up in the statuaries are very highly adapted at tolerating fresh water like these guys so they are really awesome fish and the more i learn about them the more i'm happy that uh, we decided to keep them and grow them out because they are pretty cool but let me know in the comments below what other fish you guys want to learn about and see a setup like this i do want to set up one for the mangrove jack i also want to set up one for for the african tiger well, both of them the vatatas and the goliath tiger and i also want to set up another tank for the, the wolf fish the aymara so there's a lot of things we want to set up but let me know in the comments below what fish would you like to learn more of it and uh or learn more about it and see you grow here at the shop guys before we go let's see what this tank will look like with the nightlight Ready, let's top view, let's see side view. It's a little cloudy now because we put the shrimp in there. And like I said, this is just a quick setup that I just got stuff together fast just to make it happen for you guys. And I also wanted to get them out of the basket into something else, but I do like the way this tank looks. They'll probably all grow this tank fast as well. So we definitely gotta start looking for something bigger for them and then maybe we can just add a different type of fish here. Another fish I want to uh, raise will be a tiger muskie and uh, they'll probably do better by themselves because they're super aggressive. So there's a lot of predatory fish that I want to grow and I need your help for that. So make sure you like this video and help me convince my wife and Kevin Way and Oi that we should set up more tanks to grow our fish. Love you guys, and I'll see you next time.